Welcome to the Neophotonics YouTube channel. I'm John Houghton, and today we're going to show a video on higher order modulation. It was uh, recorded about three years ago. It's a chalk talk. It was recorded just so that we could write about higher order modulation. So now that we've published the article for the last three years, we've gotten a lot of questions, especially lately. And so I thought it would be good to put this out there because it does a deep dive on the subject. So it features myself, John Houghton, and Kristen Lewatsky on the phone. And then also it features Winston Way. He's the chief technology officer at Neophotonics. He's also a PhD and a thought leader in this area. So it's a real treat to have him on. Let us know if you like the video because we can make a lot more of these. Thank you very much. Whether it's for long-haul telecommunications or data center communications, the communication happens by shooting light down fiber optical cables using transmitters and receivers. And these are laser transmitters. So the laser signal is shot down the fiber optic. It is encoded in amplitude and phase by mock sender modulators. And Winston's gonna draw us out and show us how it ties to QPSK, 16 qualm, 64 qualm. He's gonna talk about symbol rate, baud rate, and polarization. Enjoy. The typical modulator in a, in a transmitter, in a coherent transmitter, looks like this. And that's your mock sender, right? Yeah, I have uh, essentially uh, four mock senders in my so each shape like this is a uh, mock sender. Okay. So then I combine them, and then each one here has a phase shifter that's a pi over two, pi over two phase shift. And then then I have uh, uh, a polarization rotator. Yeah then I combine them. So then I have X polarization and Y polarization. Okay, coming out. And this is the tunable laser that's going into this uh, you know, so-called nested uh, Mach Zender modulator, nested. And are you also modulating intensity as part of your quantum scheme? <clears throat> yeah, so, so when you drive a signal, there are four driving signals here. One, two, three, four. So this is uh, called a uh, in phase, and it's X polarization. This is a uh, quadrature phase, X polarization, because you see there's a pi over two phase shift. That's why it's called Q, uh, quadrature phase. And this mm -hmm. one is in yep. phase. So same thing is this one is called Y. Uh, I put it here, Y. X, uh, I, uh, I, Y, okay, just followed in the nomenclature. I, Y, in phase for Y polarization, and Q, Y. Okay, so I have four signals, right? So all of these four signals, each signal, I'm driving this modulator in such a way that the, the modulator has a transfer function like this, like a sinusoidal transfer function. And this is a uh, uh, voltage, the driving voltage. But for amplitude, right? For for amplitude, yeah, driving voltage. And this is the uh, the in optical intensity or optical power, basically, same thing. So it's like a sinusoidal function, and usually for for this case, we drive this. Uh, uh, we drive a electrical signal like this, this digital, you know, one zero, one zero kind of thing. Uh, so this, this one, if I apply two levels, so I have a plus one, minus one, uh, because these two sides, they have this plot in terms of power, you lose the face information, but actually the face information uh, looks like this. So it's same curve, uh -huh. but it's, it's coming down to a face information, oh, so it's oh. actually 180 oh, reverse. Oh. So when I my pulse <coughs> drive to this side, I I see a, a pi. This is a this gives me a pi signal. When I my pulse come to here, I get a you know a zero phase signal. Hmm. So then I have a zero pi, zero pi, pi pi zero zero pi, right? So so then coming out from here, I if I have a a, a phase diagram. I can see uh, my modulation is zero and pi. Mm -hmm. It's jumping between these two. Okay. Okay. 
Now for this guy. So which modulation? Amplitude or? This is kind of a, uh, it's, it's like a or, binary or, phase modulation. Okay. Because it's so binary. binary phase. Yeah, zero and pi. So it's phase modulation. Okay. Okay. So by the time I come to here, I will have, because it's shifted by pi over two versus this one. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple, you just come to here, right? Is that amplitude? It's also phase modulation. Oh. So both are binary phase. Oh, okay, phase. oh, so now you have four. Yeah, it's 90 four, degree rotation. You have four types of phase now. Yes, okay. and then you combine them, then you see the out of here, you, you see a constellation a diagram looks like this. So that's why it's called QPSK, four phases. QPSK, phase shift keying, because it's, uh, okay. yeah. So and this is the shift? Yeah. And yeah. it's keying, it just it's keying, changing yeah, it? Yeah, because your signal is jumping from here or there, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. randomly jump among the four states. Okay. So by similarity, you will get uh, another one here, out, of, out from here, but because it's white polarization, so let's say we put it, you know, like it's lined on a, on a ground up on a piece of paper, and uh -huh. this one is vertical uh -huh. to that piece of paper. So then you have four faces here also. Uh -huh. So when you combine these two, then you have, so then you can see, um, you know, I have two polarizations, X and Y, uh -huh. you know, they're vertical to each other in terms of a polarization domain. Uh -huh. And then in each domain, I have four faces just the modulation data just jump from one point to the other. We're talking about the possibility of including something that said multiplexed polarization. So yes, so polarization it means, multiplexed. So it means, to, can that mean more than just two options? No, only okay, two. Okay, only yeah, two. Only okay. two. Okay. All right. I thought that would be a breakthrough yeah. or something. <laughs> so, wow. So when you go to a, a movie theater, uh -huh. you wear a pair of glasses <clears throat> mm -hmm. to see 3D movie. Uh -huh. And that is a X and Y polarization, only two polarization. Okay. You, you won't have <laughs> more than two polarizations. What if I have four eyes, though? <laughs> yeah, 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 you may have to invent something. For I, I usually think of the ham radio analogy where if you want to communicate, your antennas have to be the same angle. If it's like this, yeah, one antenna is like, you're not going to get yeah, very yeah. much. It's, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Just that at the receiver side, you need to have a kind of a polarization diversity receiver. Oh. So that it will be able to handle, because the, this polarization, once it, it's going into the fiber, it will rotate. So by the time it comes to impinge on your detector, you don't mm -hmm. know what polarization state it is at. Oh. So you need to have a polarization diversity receiver that can somehow you know, separate the X and Y and, oh. and separately going into the DSP, the digital signal processor, uh -huh. to process them. So it has some, some sort of frame of reference where it can figure that out? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a way you, you can... Uh, uh, the uh, local oscillator in the, like, uh, radios, you know, you also have a radio, local oscillator, right? Uh -huh. So that local oscillator will have a, will split into two polarizations. Mm -hmm. So each one will pick up their, the signal that's, you know, resonating with that polarization. Uh -huh. and then And then, both of them will go into the receiver to be processed. Ah, yeah. ah, ah. That's why the receiver also has four paths. It has also has X, I, X, Q, Y, I, Y, Q. Ah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's a kind of a uh, scary, you know, yeah. in the beginning, you know, it looks very complicated. Well, one of the things I want to do and, um, is to, I, I've built radios before, but I didn't really know what I was doing. I just followed the instructions, put it together like this, you know resistors here and whatever it was. Yeah. But I want to build one with so much detail that I can figure out what the oscillator, how it functions, can right. you s separate it and do something interesting with it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know if you're interested in <laughs> maybe yeah. doing it on so, camera. <laughs> Teach the whole... Uh, yeah, the, the radio part is the probably uh, it's getting, uh, you know, the ham radio stuff. You uh -huh. know, it's probably getting... Uh, a little bit out of date. <laughs> because well, the the bandwidth is too small, right? It's just voice. Yeah. Uh, so people probably... Pe people use... You know, the ham radio license have gone up every year. Still? Yeah, Still? in the last oh. eight years, it's keep going up. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So even though it's just for it, voice. And even Mo Morse code, even people are still uh, doing really? it. <laughs> that's a little bit less. Okay. Morse code goes three times farther than voice. Oh. Yeah, that's why people do it, because you can talk to Japan a Morse code oh. where you can't hardly talk on the East Coast in voice, so... I see. Um, 
So the, it's, and it, with these four inputs, you vary the amp can you get amplitude modulation by varying the inputs to all those? Oh yeah, so this is only the so-called uh, dual the part. Yeah, this is only called, this is a step one. You know, this was in 2010 uh -huh. when a uh, standard committee called OIF, uh -huh. uh, Optical Inter Networking Forum. Uh -huh. This is a, you know, a international um, Standard Committee okay. that uh, have this so-called uh, DEP dual polarization, you know, two polarization, QPSK mm -hmm. uh, formula was formula uh, formalized as a standard mm -hmm. starting from 2010, and ever since then everybody deployed 100 gigabit. Mm -hmm. So this is only for 100 gigabit. Okay. So starting then, you know, you see like the whole industry converged to this uh, kind of a standard format. Mm -hmm. Then by like 2014, 2015, people are no longer satisfied with only 100 gigabit. Mm -hmm. Then then the next question, how do I increase the capacity? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very natural for uh, uh, people who know the uh, modulation is to increase this one to let's say 200 gigabit, and then you have dual polarization. You never have more than two polarization anyway. Mm -hmm. Then you go to 16 quam. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so this is the second step. When you look at the 16 qualm, uh, so should we erase this or? Uh, sure, yeah. Wanna, yeah. This is recorded somehow. Yeah. Okay, so then the next one is you have a constellation diagram looks like, you know, four constellation points, points in each quadrant, right? So this is 16 qualm. So but then obviously compared to the original QPSK, which is here, 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 and here. Mm -hmm. That's that's this four points. So it could either be like this or... Yeah, you can rotate it. Rotate it a bit. Bit. <laughs> make, make it easy for yeah. yourself. So, you, so the QPSK. Now, you can see QPSK, I only need to drive it with two levels. Mm -hmm. Then I can go to zero phase and pi phase. Now I, not only I have different phases, but also I have different amplitudes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then I have to change this driving signal from binary to multi-level um, signal. So then, so then I have to change this. I have to change this to like a two-level signal here. Two levels of amplitude? Yeah, two levels of amplitude. All together, four amplitudes. Okay. So this, this from here to here is what people normally know as pan four. Yeah. Four levels of a pulse amplitude modulation. But then because you have four levels on the X, four levels on the Y, oh. X times Y is 16. 16. But then it never counts the polarization. Is that a rebuilt in Polarization is a sim similar on the Y polarization, exactly the same. Uh -huh. it's just so it's already, it's already duplicated. It's, it's already duplicated. It's already built in. Yes. It's already built in. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's how you get to both amplitude and phase by mm. having amplitude modulation here uh, in the driving signal as a multi-level driving signal. So without QAM, you're just doing a baud rate, right? Yeah. It's like NRZ or something. Uh, no, in baud rate is baud rate. So it's yeah. like. Just yeah, like it's off just off. like a bit rate. Yeah. Yeah. So when you double the baud rate, you double the bit rate, right? Yes. But when you so, so, when so the relationship between bit rate and baud rate, mm -hmm. I guess that's where you're yeah, trying yeah. to ask. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think that's pretty simple, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so bit rate uh, so, for example, you can see QPSK is, there are four states, so it's two to the twos, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then 16 qualm is two to the fourth. Mm -hmm. And then when we, when we say uh, 32 qualm mm -hmm. is two to the fifth. And when we say 64 qualm is two to the sixth, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that means, uh, this one has two bits per symbol. Right. This one has four bits per symbol. It's five bits per symbol, six bits per symbol. Meaning, how can I form a QPSK? I have to assign zero, zero, 
zero one, one zero, one one. So there are four combinations, mm -hmm. four possibilities, right? By forming by two bits. So these two numbers make a symbol together. Yes, zero one is a one symbol. Okay. So you can get when you do like a four symbol thing. You'd think it would quadruple the data rate, but it only it doesn't quadruple. It would it. double. It, Th you know, this is doubling from. But there's four NRs. symbols. W wouldn't you be able to get? Yeah, you 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 were you had uh, like only two symbols before. Now you have four oh, symbols. Oh, so you have two more. Yeah. Okay. Let's say you go from here to here. Yeah, from so here to here is three times more. Yeah. Okay. Right? Well. It just seems like there should be more. <laughs> yeah, but in my simple non-mathematical mind. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the yeah. Yeah, that's that's why I keep getting a little confused because I've been reading a lot about the um, sixteen sixty-four clump. I understand the um, mechanism that lets you send multiple bits and an increasing number of bits per symbol. I still keep getting hung up on the relationship between symbol and symbol rate or baud rate. Symbol and why if you are symbol. getting more symbols, that, does, that doesn't increase your speed. Yeah, you can, maybe a simple way to think is like uh, when I have QPSK, my symbol is two bits, right? So you can think that two bits are transmitted simultaneously. Right, so therefore my, I don't need to, uh, uh, so essentially I double my, for the same, uh, same, uh, uh, so first of all, baud rate is same as symbol rate. So baud is symbol, so you put, so, okay. so the first thing you need to remember. Okay. Symbol rate is baud rate. Now, because symbol actually is easier to understand. What is symbol is this one. So when I have a symbol rate, each symbol, I'm actually sending two bits. So in terms of bit rates, I should multiply by two to get my bit rates because mm -hmm. I actually have two bits in there, mm -hmm. right? So it's very simple to, to understand. Now, if I have a symbol, like in the case of a 16 quam, you can see here, every symbol here, I have to give it four, four digits, 0, 0, 1, 1, this one is 0, 1, 1, 1. This is one, 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 for example. Mm -hmm. So when I send a symbol, I'm actually sending four bits. Oh, so, so, so my it's not super efficient. It's not like you're doubling. Yeah, when you go higher and higher, it's more and more efficient. Oh, okay. Right? Because then uh, when, when I, once, I, once I send a one symbol, I'm sending more and more bits. Mm -hmm. Of course, my total bit rate is going up for the same symbol rate, mm -hmm. right? For the same symbol rate, if I have higher constellation, I should be able to send more data. Right. Is but that, is that the so? What, what, I guess in my s naive mind, I think of sixty-four. Well, let's take sixteen. I think of sixteen different dots flashing on and on and off and on yeah. and giving a different um, data stream. Yes. Is is that the case? Yeah. It, well, it's it's basically showing that both. The uh, I domain and mm -hmm. the Q domain are mm -hmm. both sending data. That's mm -hmm. why you, each data point here is yeah. formed by the existence of two data streams, one here, uh -huh. one here. Uh -huh. So it's not a single, it's not a single data stream. It's two data streams okay. form this, this dots. Right, because what, what I was thinking is that when you go from four qualm to 16, you should get like four times the data rate. Do you? 16, uh, from four to 16, you got four to three 16. times, right? Because each symbol you send two bits here. Three and this one is, yeah, it's three times. So th three times data rate going from here to here. So it's not, so it's not really, I shouldn't really double things up and assume that you're you should get. You should look at the uh, subscript. Uh, <laughs> that's where you should compare the comparison. I haven't done anything raised to any power in like 20 years in math, okay? So I gotta get used to these. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay. So, so basically each symbol contains multiple bits. And then the more bits is in each symbol, mm -hmm. the more is the capacity. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you go higher and higher constellation, your capacity gets higher and higher. Would it be too complex to 
erase the board and go through an example of bits with this versus bits with 16 qualm? Uh, 16 qualm is already shown here, right? Each, it's, each one yeah. contains uh, uh, actually, you know, from I and Q, uh -huh. but each I and Q has four levels, and that's why, you know, how do you represent four levels? You have to use two bits, uh -huh. right? Because I and Q, remember, there's a four level, one level, two level, three level, four level. Mm -hmm. How do you represent these levels by zero and one? So you have to use two bits okay. to represent them. So that's oh. the first two. Huh. And then you have I and Q, then you need a second second one, right? So don't all together you need four bits. I think if I built one of Steve Jobs' adding machines that you'll only use as binary, you know? <laughs> and they're trying to do things with these binary things yeah. it, with the switches in front of the computer. Right. Then I could understand more thoroughly. Yeah, it was always, uh, you know, the, it's a paradigm shift now is like people are already facing, especially uh, copper world. Uh, or, or uh, you know, PC, you know, mm -hmm. PCB, like in in a, in a, in a iPhone. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you keep pushing speed, but um, the uh, transmission line has limited bandwidth. So I mean, you cannot push the physics. It can't go that off quick. on fast enough. It cannot go on and off fast enough. So then you need to use the limited bandwidth and change the modulation format, mm -hmm. like we were talk talking here, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. increase the capacity. There's no way they can push this direction, say, I want more and more bandwidth. Yeah. No, sorry, you know, there. physics is not that fast to, for you to change, right? Mm -hmm. so, so then you have to think about modulation. Now people even think modulation is enough, they're trying to think about coding, you know, use different coding method, but it's oh. not a, a mainstream yet. Oh. Mainstream right now is just modulation format. Do you think that offers promise? Yeah, it increased a little like 10%, 20%. So it's not like, you know, dramatic. Like this one is you easily change from here to here yeah, three yeah. times, right? 300%. So oh. that's a, that you have to go that, that route. Okay. So that's why, that's why uh, for a limited bandwidth, in order to increase the capacity, mm -hmm. you have to go for advanced modulation format. Mm -hmm. And some people call these uh, higher order modulation, HOM. Okay. It's, it's you know, the way to go. So that's what I call paradigm shift is that, generally speaking, people like to use NRZ, on and off, right. for many, many years. Now mm -hmm. suddenly they have to get their mind adjusted to four levels. Yeah. You know, instead of on, on and off, now you see multiple levels, yeah. people kind of, whoa, what, what is, is this? That's, that's, that's what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> See, right. NRZ is easy, you yeah. know, it's just bits yeah. going through yeah. there. Yeah, just like but the Indians use their mirrors, right? They just uh, signal yeah. the far end, it's only on and off. Right, right. right. But, but they, they cannot generate multi-level <laughs> Well, maybe they can give uh, <laughs> two-thirds the amount of smoke. And he said, no, that's a two-thirds. And he, yeah. So they give four times the data. Right. Then they, they get the message a lot quicker. Yeah, so because yeah. it could take an hour to say, look, there's an enemy coming. But, but what they can do is, uh, for example, they can use a, a mirror and a, and use a color filter. Then they, what they send to you, first color is blue, oh, second okay. color, you know, still on and off. Yeah. But there's color added, right? So then well, then you, you can throw s chemicals into the fire. Like you can make blue. <laughs> <with a> certain, <laughs> yeah. You can make s sulfur is like yellow, magic, right? Yes. Yeah. And then there's different. Uh, yeah. Make a black smoke or something that's really burning something like plastic. <laughs> Those are plastic. You need to inhale all the smoke. That's right. <laughs> or well, the next, next bit to, to, yeah. to be transmitted. So we got the signal, but he's dead. <laughs> he inhaled the smoke. Plenum, it wasn't plenum. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, uh, what else, Kristen? Uh, let's see, I want to go back to something that you said a little while ago. When, so by the way, this is great. Thank you so much for your patience. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, you had mentioned, I have been thinking of all of this as a single, very complex optical signal, and I keep trying to sort of visualize it, but you mentioned that it's not, it's actually simultaneous, or is it all simultaneous in the uh, modulator, and then when it comes out, it's a very complex single optical signal? Yeah, it's, they all happen at the same time. Okay, but it's a single signal that goes down the fiber. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah. Um, 
And how are we doing on time? How long do we have you for? I have him for an hour and a half. Hear you. So we're we're halfway through. <clears throat> we haven't got to the punchline yet, but as soon as we understand modulation, then we'll ask him <laughs> what's the news. <laughs> Yeah, because I want to make sure that we do the key thing, which is give us the key points on the new modulator and the key points we ought to be covering in the blog. I want to make sure we have time for that. Yeah. Um, but this is really important to finally get straight. Um, so when we're talking about the symbols, I'm used to thinking, like you yes, you were talking about earlier, NRD and um, amplitude, amplitude shift key, very easy to think of the state as laser on, laser off, phase shift king, you know, uh, phase is zero, phase is pi. When we start getting to these more complicated states, um, physically, what's happening with the light wave to create the different signals? Are you retarding it so that your uh, the phase is shifted? Is that no, it's a. Uh it's still very simple. The phase always has a zero degree and another one is 90 degree phase shifted. Okay. So it's I and Q. I and Q always there. They never change. Okay. So how you increase from four states to say 64 states or here 16 states is by changing the driving amplitude from two level to four level and to eight level mm -hmm. or to 16 level. You know, so uh, it's the amplitude level that's being changed uh, in order to increase the capacity from uh, 4 kAm to, you know, 16 or 64 kAm. So if it's zero versus pi, you just subdivide it more? Sorry. You have, you have the, the in-phase uh, in phase domain, you have the quadrature phase domain. Uh -huh. It's always there, but in each domain, you just uh, uh, get uh, multi-level signal. So is that the same as what I'm talking I, about? Like here's pi, here's zero. Yeah, here's in, zero. in a way, so yes. You yes, kind of yes, yes. The whole thing. You, you look at here, right? Mm -hmm. we, we we were talking about from here to here is pi. Mm -hmm. But now I, I drive it halfway. Mm -hmm. The amplitude has a half amplitude. But here. is this true with phase also? It's, it's, it's corresponding to half of the phase. Yeah. Oh, yes, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. No, I think I finally just got it. So it's basically just adding in. Thanks, John, for your scale. Oh, it's not just adding in the four amplitudes and intensity, but more than just the four phase states. That's what gets us to 64, is that it? Yeah, usually it's uh, easier to understand that, uh, you know, how do you form these dots here, right? The 16 right. dots here. In each, do each domain, you have uh, each domain. This is, let's say, the I domain in one of the arm here. You, you drive it with four levels, right? Yeah. So you see four dots, mm. right? If you turn off the other, the other guy, you only see a single state on one line. Then you turn on this guy and turn off, you turn off the upper one, you turn on the lower one, then you see, this is the Q domain, you see four le levels, because I'm driving the, driving the modulator with four level signal. Mm -hmm. So that's when I turn off. actually outside the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so let me plot it inside. So this, is, Q, this is Q. Then you will see four levels. You turn off I, you will see four levels this way. You turn off Q, you will see the I having four constellation dots, right? Is that is that understandable? Yeah. Okay. I didn't. Kristen, is that is that uh, making sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. So now when I turn both on, what would happen? So I would I may have this guy combined with this guy, mm -hmm. then that will be, be this point. Oh, I see. If I have this guy combined with this guy, I have this point, uh -huh. right? So you have four times four, you have 16 combinations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's the easiest way to think about how you generate 16 quantum. Each time you go, you go three times? Not necessarily. Like oh. this guy uh, is, a, is an odd one. You try to plot it in a square way. Mm -hmm try to plot in a, a square way, it's, it's not going to happen because what do you have to do? You have to use six dots 
Oh. So actually, 36 divided by 4 is 9 dots in each. <coughs> so you have something like... Uh, So there's uh, eight, right? Eight dots in here. Oh, so you, you're missing one here, right? So then you have another one here. And everything else is in. So almost like six times six, but you cut the four corners. Oh, 36. 36 minus 4, that's 32 qua. Oh, because you're missing... Cause I'm missing four corners. Eight. Yes, this, this corner is missing. So it's 6 times 6. Is this so you're driving, you're driving the modulator with 6 levels uh -huh. on each, each domain. Uh -huh. So 6 times 6, you get 36 symbols. And then you cut, you know, use a digital processing to cut off these four corners. These four corners does not exist. So it's 32, 32 times more? Six times six. Oh, this no for this one. Oh, this is thirty-two, right? Thirty-two oh. is equal to thirty-six minus four, right? Right. And thirty-six is uh, six square, right? Yeah. Six levels square that. <clears throat> so every every time there's an advance, I just want to get the number that because I had to write about this one time. I couldn't figure out what uh, uh, whatever it is um, NRZ to this is PAM four. NRZ, what, what is what, what was oh, what was the improvement? Yeah, and it was like threefold. I thought it would be fourfold, but it's really threefold, right? The, uh, no, the NR, so don't call it NRZ. You should call it a OOK, on off key. On off key. That's the official name. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you on off key. Not, yeah. So this is two to one. Two right? to one. So you just compare this subscript one to so two. That's two times. That's two. That's four, eight. Yeah. And then. Um, no, this is, this, this wait, is wait, wait, four, wait. right? No, no, no. Oh. This 16. is five times. Oh, okay. This is six times. I'll be, oh, okay. Okay, you got to help me here. 64? Oh, what's this is 32. Oh, just copy over there. <laughs> 64. Yeah. Try to do the math. Yeah. So that's... And this represents... Like this is uh, just where we're starting at two, so that's twice the data. Yeah. Two is to go to QPSK, just twice the data. But then you're getting four times more when you're doing 16 qualm from yes. here. Yes. Yes. And then this is um, eight times more than on-off keying, and um, 16 the six, 32 qualm is 16 times more than on-off keying. Yeah, but the capacity increase again is you should uh, look 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 at the, like <coughs> this right. Normalized capacity, let's put it here, uh, capacity. Yeah. This is one. Oops. On off keying is one. This is one. Okay. This is two. This is four. Right? Okay. This is five. And this is six. Six times? Yeah. This, oh, okay. At this point, you so only you, get six. It's like you were saying, you just use the power. <laughs> use the amplitude, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the power. Uh, use the, the power index, to, yeah. you know, the yeah. square, and that'll give you how many. So whenever we come out with um, 64 qualm, I can say it's six times more than off key, six times more yes, data. Yes, yes. And that would be true. Yes. And so when we come up with. But, but actually, when you add, on off key doesn't have two polarizations. So here you actually have, you need to double it when we talk about co coherent system because so it 12? always have two polarizations. You multiply by two here. So it's 12 times. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Maybe I could write it up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On, off, king, Q, P, S, K, which is four. And then there's 16 qualm. 32 qualm, 64 qualm. I want to be good for a couple of years now when I do this right. So it's uh, 132. <laughs> is it 138? One, oh, sorry, 128. Yeah. Rough on math. Yeah. No, nobody. And it's uh, 256 after that. Yeah. 256. Microwave uh, communication has gone up to 256. Well, we're gonna we're gonna future proof this. 512. <laughs> okay. 
All right, I have to erase a little bit of this. So this is this is one. Yes. And then uh, this this would that be should be two times two. two. That's four, four. Four. And then this would be three eight. times eight. Thirty-two and is um, five, five times, times two, two is t ten. ten. Yeah. And this is twelve. Yes. And then, do I just add two? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, six, seven, and then the 14. Seven, 14. And 16. 16. And then 18. the 18. So it's going to be 18 times more. When we do 512, then we do, we're going to do 10, 1,000, um, what is it? 1,000. 24. 24. Now, this is, I'm just going to. Write that down, and <laughs> I don't have to memorize any of it, or yeah. have to work through and that. Just uh, maybe, just you know, footnote that you got extra two times here because of polarizations. Well, the oh, okay. It doesn't have polarizations. Oh, I see. So that's why you, you went from here. Otherwise, Otherwise if, if you had polarization be. here, then it would have been two. Yeah, then it should be two. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. All right. Shows you how long I haven't done math in. So <laughs> here, <a> cricket. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so now I will never wonder or have to like write on <laughs> a blog release. Oh, now when 64 comes out, I could say, well, that was, um, it's not going to be twice of what uh, 32 was. Yeah, it's not. It's only going to be 20% more. Yeah. And then it's going to be even less as you go higher. Yeah. So when you go from 512 to 10, yeah, you, you would more think more. it would be like, great, yeah. we're going to go from 512 yeah. to 1024, exactly. but then you're only going to improve by exactly. a small percentage. That's like, why when I go from today's 32 gigabaud, uh -huh. and I, right now we're moving to 64 gigabaud, right? Mm -hmm. So I can easily double just by pushing the bandwidth. Oh. And instead of going this route, it's a difficult route. This route is actually, yeah. it's more, Strenuous, it's you know, it's like climbing a big mountain. Oh, and this this is like a little hill, so it's uh -huh. not not as well. I I shouldn't say that, but it's still a lot of effort, but relatively easier than than trying to climb the mountain on the left hand side. So you're talking about increasing the baud rate versus going with a bigger quantity. Yes, yes. For for higher capacity, mm -hmm. you always you always face you're always facing two choices. Should I go higher baud rate or mm -hmm. I should go higher constellation? Mm -hmm. Then turn on that this path, at least you know up to 64, it's an uh, easier path than going this way. This way, there's many many technical hurdles huh. which I I cannot you know talk all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just everything's going to be so packed in, like the the eye of the signal, you know, yeah. it's going to be closing in. Unlock keying <coughs> people always push bandwidth mm -hmm. until one day they don't they lo no longer have bandwidth, so yeah. they, they come to here. Yeah. Right. But then now, it, so for coming from here to let's say sixty four quam, uh, buys them some time. Yeah. So then people when you know count on the constellation, they got some extra time to push the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So now they finally, they can push the bandwidth by two times now. Uh -huh. They have to stay here for a while and still count on this side. Because we're still with, like, like where's everybody right now? Like, are they somewhere like in QPSK and they want to go to 64 Quam on the next jump? Yeah, right now, uh, commercial product is, is is a combination of these two. Okay. 32 gigabyte and, and 16 Quam. 16 Quam. Oh, 16. Oh, I see. So, yeah. so when they go to 64, they're going to get like, uh, it's like 50%, is that? Yeah. So that'll yeah. be a big jump. Yeah. But then going down here is like, yeah, hitting, yeah. It's, like hitting yeah. a, it's like hitting a thermal wall exactly. or something. Exactly. Just apply the voltage. And it's gonna exactly. We hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you want to see the article that was written based on this Chalk Talk, you can go to neophotonics.com slash blog and read the article. It's got uh, lots of handy tables and a few uh, encoding examples. It's been updated. And actually, our blog itself, we have nearly 100 articles written that are very similar to the video that you've seen, just trying to educate and get, get material out there for the industry. And finally, if you want to listen to our podcast, go to neophotonics.com, and you can see our podcasts on the homepage, or you can search for us on iTunes or in Google Podcasts or on Stitcher under the name Neophotonics Podcast. Thank you. Thank you.